In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to repaint an arcade cabinet with an HVLP setup. That's right, this is part 11 of the Joust Restoration Series, and if you've been following this project at all, you know that I had to do a bunch of wood repair to the cabinet itself. The, the bottom of the sides and the front had been all chewed up, the cabinet had been dragged along the floor off of its leg levelers or whatever, and there was a bunch of damage that I had to address as part of this restoration project. So I used a bunch of wood hardener and Bondo and did sanding, and, it, and it's looking nice and smooth now. The wood's all repaired and looking good, but now I've got to address the paint, right? So I took a bunch of the original uh, a brown paint off the sides of the cabinet as part of this repair, and now I've got to spray some brown paint on this cabinet. Uh, in the last Joust episode, I showed you this HVLP setup that I was putting together, and HVLP stands for High Volume Low Pressure. It's a way of, of spraying paint onto a cabinet with a specialized HVLP paint gun and an air compressor, and it's designed to minimize the overspray and make it nice and easy, and, and you don't waste a lot of paint. Um, you know, and you typically get good results, but I've never done it before at, at all. That's why I was putting that, you know, kit together for the first time. And I figure, you know, for this project, it's a great practice. It's a great way for me to practice using this setup because I'm going to want to do it when I completely redo the stencils on my Miss Pac-Man cabinet that I'm also working on. So in this episode, we're going to head out to the garage. Uh, <laughs> we're going to uh, get all of that put together. We're going to mix the paint and, uh, you know, we're going to get everything squared away. We're going to get everything prepped and ready to go. And then we're going to repaint that cabinet. So um, I'm kind of nervous. I've never done anything like this before, uh, but hopefully what I'm showing you will, will help you figure out how to do this yourself. So uh, with that, why don't we head out to the garage and get started? Let's go. Overtime. Overtime. Now, before I show you any of this, I am a complete amateur when it comes to this sort of thing. I've never done it before. This is my first time. So take everything I'm saying with a huge grain of salt. There's a lot of people out there that know a lot more about this than I do. And definitely this is a low cost, you know, budget way to go, or at least moderate way to go. Um, you know, so people who do this professionally will really cringe at a lot of what I'm, I'm showing here and sort of laugh at the, the cheap stuff that I bought, but that's totally okay. It, it's meant to serve my purposes, not to do this professionally or to work on cars or anything like that. Um, I'm probably making a bunch of mistakes, but this is what I'm doing. You know, I've done a ton of research on this sort of thing and, and reached out to a lot of folks and got some good info, but there isn't necessarily, you know, a, a simple, simple step-by-step -step tutorial out there. So hopefully this can help you in some way, or at least help you avoid making the mistakes that maybe I'm making. And I wanna give a particular thank you to Troy from Troy's Restorations on YouTube. He does both arcade cabinet and automotive restorations for giving, giving me some pointers here, uh, but I'm not going to attribute any of the mistakes I'm making to him. So in my last Joust update video, or the last part in this series, I showed you everything that I had bought, and that's generally speaking what I've used. I got some feedback on a couple different things, and I made a couple changes here and there, but for the most part, what I showed you in the last video are the parts that I'm using, but it was just sort of out of the box, out of the bag at that point. Um, so let me see, show you what it looks like when it's, when it's all put together. So this is the HVLP gun that I'm using. It's the super cheap $10 purple Harbor Freight Special. Uh, you know, you get, I really, really recommend reading the instructions very thoroughly if you've never done this before. Uh, it's very important to clean the gun the first time you use it and do a really, really uh, thorough cleaning, disassemble the gun, clean all the insides because there's a bunch of lubricants and stuff in there to uh, you know, uh, prevent corrosion and that sort of thing while it's you know, sitting on the shelf for years. So take it all apart like the instructions say, clean it the way it does, get it perfectly dry and set up and ready to go. I've got this little stand that the gun is uh, sort of holding or uh, uh, being held in which lets me you know, funnel or uh, filter the paint through this little funnel filter uh, to make sure we've got no particulates in there. Um, so that's pretty good. What's nice about the instructions is it sort of tells you, you know, how to set up your uh, uh, air supply, right? And we basically followed this setup. Going from the tank, I had to add a little uh, shut off ball, ball valve here that I'll show you in a second. Going through the first run of line, uh, air hose, uh, and then going to uh, see is what the, uh, this is one we didn't use, um, and I'll explain it in a minute, the air cleaner slash dryer. Uh, it's, it's listed as optional here in the instructions, and, and I bought one, but I couldn't get it to work right. Uh, D is the main filter. E is a regulator. Um, 
B is the second line or second run of air hose. And then uh, F here, we have a coupler, yep. And then I have um, an air adjusting valve for making sort of micro adjustments. And for the most part, this is what I've done. And yeah, I got a mess over here of uh, <laughs> tools and, and parts and, and that sort of thing. Um, so over here is the new 21 gallon uh, Harbor Freight uh, air compressor that I got because my, my old one, you know, isn't quite uh, big enough. And even this is a little bit underpowered for HVLP, but it's, it's been working well so far. So uh, from the compressor going through that shutoff valve, you know, and then through this sort of first run of 20, uh, so 25 or 50 feet, I can't remember, I think it's 50, 50 feet of air hose. We come over here and it goes into the filter. And uh, like I said, I had bought the, uh, the dryer uh, piece, uh, but I just could not get any airflow through it whatsoever. Uh, and I don't know if there's a plug that I was supposed to remove, but I removed a plug on this side. Uh, and there's, I don't know if this was supposed to be a plug or whatever, I couldn't get it out. But uh, anyway, I'm not too worried about that. This filter should do a pretty good job of keeping moisture out. Goes through this regulator. Again, we wanna maintain, make sure we've got the right pressure uh, going through the line. Through the next run of hose all the way here. Uh, and then this is the sort of uh, disposable uh, uh, filter that I've got right here. Hopefully that can keep out a little bit extra moisture. And then this uh, additional additional uh, regulator I got here, uh, an extra one I got just for really fine tuning. So I'm really controlling the air pressure at three different points, you know, at the tank, uh, this regulator sort of right next to the filter in the middle of the line, and then right at the, uh, at the gun too. So making sure I've got the right pressure uh, that I need. Um, Let's see, coming over here is the primer that I'm using. Let me get you into the, uh, the tripod so we can take a look at this. Okay, for the, the primer and paint, I went in a slightly different direction uh, than I was originally planning to. Originally, I was gonna go with a Sherwin-Williams uh, paint that I know others have used, like Liam from Retrobotics uh, on YouTube, uh, also known as 64-bit, uh, he's on the Coin Jam podcast with me. So he uses, he's been using the Sherwin Williams paint and having some good results with it, but he's doing a complete re-stenciling of his joust, right? And I'm just doing some touch-ups. I went to uh, uh, Sherwin Williams to get the paint mix. I brought a chip, the chip wasn't large enough. We were trying to get a good color match, but they only had uh, oil-based paint in um, a glossy uh, 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 base, right? So they only had a glossy uh, uh, oil-based paint. And I didn't want to do glossy because that's really not going to match you know, what the cabinet is. I think the cabinet was originally like satin maybe, and it, even there it's kind of come, you know, dulled down a little bit over 40 years. So I wanted to, to match it pretty good. So I went over to Benjamin Moore. You know, again, the chip that I brought was was too small, but uh, we, were, we were able to find a pretty good match. I think it was called Chocolate Sunday as the color. And the, uh, the, the salesperson talked me into going with an Alkyd, right? So that's spelled, uh, a-L-K-Y-D. So it's not an oil-based paint. It's not a latex. It's an alkyd, which I guess is relatively new. Apparently this is popular when, when doing cabinets, like regular kitchen uh, cabinets. Um, you know, it is a water-based or a water-borne uh, paint, but, um, you know, it, it, it sort of goes on like an oil-based paint. Anyway, it's what I'm going with. You can spray it. Uh, should be fine. This is the primer that I went with. Uh, so this is Benjamin Moore Fresh Start. Alkyd primer, uh, and we tinted it sort of, you know, kind of purplish. So it, it's almost like the uh, the color that's uh, that's on the can here. And uh, I don't know if I've screwed up or not. Um, I thinned this with um, mineral spirits, right? And it does say clean with mineral spirits, but um, maybe this is an oil-based alkyd. Again, I'm not entirely sure. I, I'm not an expert. So I thinned this. I've got this mixing cup right here that I've and I already put a, a coat of primer on, if you haven't tell. I wanted to make sure I knew what I was doing somewhat before giving a, uh, <laughs> an overview. So I, I put, you know, poured about a pint or so of the quart of the primer into this mixing cup. And I thinned it with mineral spirits. Now, oh, that's another thing that I kind of, you know, I, you know, I bought a bunch, you know, I went two different times and I thought I got the same thing both times. This is what I got originally, sort of, this is what I'm, I'm used to using. I used to buy in metal cans, but I guess it comes in plastic now. I don't know if that's safe or whatever, the sort of odor, odorless mineral spirits. And then I went to get uh, some more and I wasn't really paying attention and I ended up buying this, which I guess is the clean strip green. And this stuff looks like milk. It's not clear like the, the, the normal stuff that I'm used to. 
this green version is almost like chalkier or, you know, milk colored. So I probably won't use that again, but I used it to clean the gun and, and thin the paint. But uh, anyway, this is sort of where we're at. Um, and this is thinned. I just did this yesterday, so it's still relatively fresh. And uh, that's kind of the consistency you're going for. So, you know, sort of the consistency of maybe just a tad thicker than, um, than whole milk. And this is maybe dried a tiny bit. So I'm gonna add just a touch more of this mineral spirits. And you'll see when it comes out, it's like, almost like milky colored. And, you know, there's no necessarily perfect sort of, you know, ratio that you're going for. Um, you know, you add a little bit of thinner, a little bit of mineral spirits at a time, and you're kind of looking for that, you know, whole milk uh, consistency, or maybe just a touch, a touch thicker than, than whole milk, right? So, they, you know, I was reading and it was saying, you know, not as thick as heavy cream, right? Not as thick as cream, but a little bit thicker than, than whole milk. And maybe that's, maybe I need to go a little bit thinner. I don't know. It's not... It's not an exact science. We put a touch more in there. And just like yesterday, I've run out of daylight. So we're gonna have to get some exterior lights on to, uh, to do it uh, when, I'm, when I go to apply the paint. But yeah, isn't that weird, right? I've always thought mineral spirits are supposed to be, you know, clear. And this green stuff is, maybe it's more safer for the environment or around kids and pets and stuff, but it's just weird. So that's probably good. Mix that up a little bit. Okay, so that's probably good. That's about what it was yesterday, which, which worked out well. So uh, let's go load this into the gun. Okay, I'm ready to load the thinned primer into the gun. Uh, the gun's been cleaned thoroughly or as thoroughly as I can uh, since last night. And the purpose of this filter is to make sure that no, you know, I don't know, sediment or particulates or whatever uh, go into the gun, which could cause uh, some trouble. Oh, and I'm dripping a little bit already. So keep some paper towel on hand for uh, little small cleanups. And it does take a while for this paint to work its way through this, uh, through this filter, but that should be fine. Keep adding some, you know, the, the pressure, I guess, uh, of the additional paint helps, uh, helps to run it through the filter. So we'll let that filter through. And I'm loading it, I don't know, a third of the way, maybe, maybe a little bit more. That's probably a good amount of paint in there. So I'm just going to put the cap back on, or the lid back on the mixing cup. I don't know if I'm gonna need any more primer, but I'm hoping to get away with two coats of primer and maybe three coats of paint. Um, and with the primer, the can says uh, you can go uh, two hours between coats, but by the time I got everything set up last night, uh, I only had time to put one coat on before I had to uh, really call in a night and uh, go to bed. But with the paint, it's like, it's like 15 hours between coats with that, al it's a water-based alkyd. So I guess the primer is an oil-based alkyd. So you've got to, and because it's oil-based, you've got to use mineral spirits to uh, thin it and clean it up. But the paint is a waterborne alkyd or a water-based alkyd. And so you only need to use water to uh, thin it and clean up. So uh, that's kind of interesting. So, okay. Basically done with the filter here. We'll catch that. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, cap the paint cup. And I think, I think we're good to go. So, <laughs> As you can see, well, hopefully as you can see, beyond the mess, it is dark outside. So let me get everything set up out there. I'll put an extra exterior work light on and uh, we'll, we'll apply some primer. 
Okay, and of course, as soon as I turn off the camera, it starts raining outside, which is something that I was frankly worried about. But um, I'm not gonna let that stop me. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna do this indoors. So I've set up a drop cloth uh, to protect, you know, the other stuff here in the cabinet. And, uh, you know, a little bit of tight quarters, but I think we can make this work. I am wearing a mask, as hopefully you can see. So I'm just going to plug in the uh, little regulator with the disposable filter. We are now hooked up to power here. And before we can actually spray the cabinet, we've got to get the pattern of the gun uh, set up. So read the instructions. There's really three different knobs. This is sort of the fan pattern. I think this is the volume of paint and this is the air supply. Uh, and even though it's reading at almost a hundred, uh, I'll make an adjustment here. I kind of want it in the 40 to 50 range when I pull the trigger. And you got to adjust it uh, when the gun is going. So let me give a little spray here. And see it's way below 40 when I do that. So we'll kick it up here. All right, we're at about 50 when I pull it. I don't think I'm getting enough paint. All right, we're getting paint. And you just gotta make these adjustments. There we go. And now we can test it with the pattern that we're looking for. And that's not bad. Sort of straight up and down. I'm happy with that. And we're going to uh, get the cabinet into position. All right. Here we go. Uh, I've got everything masked off that I don't want to spray. Uh, I don't know if we're still in frame here. Uh, I used newspaper, which I'll never do again. It took way too long and uh, I'm not happy with how it turned out. So I'll probably use something else in the future. But anyway, here we go. Uh, I am gonna end up spraying the floor. I don't know if I can you get some uh, cardboard or something to cover that up. All right. And you want to start away, start your stroke, come across smooth and stop away and come back and forth. So uh, here goes nothing. All right, you heard the compressor turn back on, but uh, I think that's kind of okay. Sort of blew some of the masking off, but that's the back of the cabinet. I'm not really worried about that. So, come and take a look. I guess that looks okay. We'll spin it around and do the other side. And yeah, laugh all you want. Definitely amateur hour. Oh no, I never promised anything different.
All right, let me do the other side and try to minimize the amount of paint that I get on the floor. Okay, I'm all tangled. Uh, I've still got my mask on just because, you know, I don't know if that helps with the fumes or something, but if you can see this, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Uh, it looks more pink or purple in person, but, and we definitely got some on the garage floor. Sorry, honey. My wife is watching, but uh, she, probably isn't, she probably is not watching. But yeah, that's what that looks like, you know. Certainly not ideal to paint indoors. I wish I didn't have to do that, but you know, mother nature doesn't always cooperate. So let's see. Yeah, and the primer really helps accentuate the imperfections. Like down here, you can see dimples and maybe right there, but um, it's smooth. And my goodness, what a ton of work to paint such a small area, right? Like, what is this? Maybe uh, three, four, five square feet on either side. You know, I could have easily done this with a roller, but um, you know, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I figured if nothing else, you know, and see how this tape is coming up. I got the, some of the good tape, but I ran out of the good tape and I got the cheap stuff and it's not really hanging on. But uh, yeah, I figure, um, yeah, I wanted to get a setup like this. I wanted to learn how to do this. This was an opportunity to get some practice, you know, low risk uh, situation, so that when my stencils come in to do the Miss Pac-Man, which uh, my uh, intelligence sources say may be happening sooner rather than later, that is me getting those stencils, uh, I'll know what I'm doing and have a setup that works and is proven and that I know how to use to do the stencils on the Miss Pac. So yeah, for now, this could have been easier to, to roll. Uh, certainly a lot less setup, a lot less expense, but I figured this was a good opportunity to get practice uh, learning how to do this stuff. So uh, yeah, let me go uh, clean up a little bit and then I'll, I'll show you what I'm doing at that point. Okay, the HVLP spray gun is fully cleaned per the instructions. Uh, the, and, you know, technically the instructions don't say that you have to fully disassemble it like I did after every time you paint uh, in order to clean it, but I felt like I really couldn't get the inside of the gun clean unless I disassembled it, pulled the needle out, took the nozzle off, all that stuff. Uh, so that's what I did. I cleaned it in the mineral spirits and then the water, or warm water, just like the instructions say, and I uh, uh, blew it clean or blew it dry with the, uh, the air hose. Um, so that should be good to go for next time. And yeah, I really, really don't like this stuff. Uh, the, the, the clean strip green odorless mineral spirits. The traditional odorless mineral spirits is the way to go. This is the clear stuff. This stuff is all milky. You can't quite tell, you know, when you're trying to run mineral spirits through the gun, you know, and you're looking for it to come out clear, you can't ever tell if it's clear with this milky stuff, right? So forget that, I'll never use that again. I'll stick with this. The stuff I actually know and I'm familiar with, I'll use that going forward. So that's good to go. Um, so basically, yeah, what we're gonna do now is let this dry. This is the second coat of primer. I think I can probably get away with just using two coats. Um, we're gonna let this dry and if the weather cooperates tomorrow, we will gently sand it. I've got some, uh, 320 grit uh, sanding discs that will just scuff it up a little bit, smooth out any imperfections. And yeah, the, uh, the primer definitely highlights uh, any imperfections that you have or didn't address uh, with the Bondo. But the Bondo line was kind of like down here. You can almost sort of faintly see the Bondo line. And right there is, uh, was you know a damage that I didn't cause or that I didn't attempt to repair. Those sort of back up in the, in the paint itself. So yeah, this is uh, the left side of the cabinet. We'll turn it around here. 
then I've got uh, I've got the cabinet on a dolly. Uh, this side looks pretty good too. Down here in the back corner is where again we've got some uh, some imperfections that the, the primer is helping to highlight, but all in all it looks pretty good. Uh, I've got a sort of second uh, row of tape, um, so in order to, to feather everything, I'm going to pull, when things are dry, I'm going to pull this sort of extra uh, tape line, uh, line of painter's tape to move the paint line up a little bit, so there is some paint above the primer back onto more of the uh, original uh, paint on the side, so uh, yeah, I'd say so far so good, keep your fingers crossed that things turn out okay, so yeah, you'll, uh, you'll next see me uh, when, you know, we're ready to go back outside. I think it might supposed to rain tomorrow, so might have to be another day or so. We'll get out there, we'll, we'll sand this gently, and then uh, we should be ready to apply some brown paint to the sides of the cabinet. So stay tuned for that. Okay, it's two days later. It's fully, fully dry, both coats of primer. Uh, it was pouring rain yesterday, so I didn't want to do <laughs> any of this work uh, in those conditions. So now what I'm going to do is sand the primer because it's really rough. Uh, I'm going to remove this extra uh, layer of tape masking that I put on. Oh, and it's pulling off some of the original paint, which I don't like at all. Wild. Okay. Hopefully it doesn't do that on this side. Oh man. All right, it's not so bad on this side, just a little bit, but not happy, not happy that it's doing it at all. And I'm doing this, I'm exposing some of the paint because I want to be able to feather this in. I don't know if this is a proper technique, but I'm going to sand uh, the primer here. I've got a high grit, 320 grit uh, sandpaper a disc on my random orbit sander and uh, yeah we're gonna rough or uh, smooth this out I'm gonna come just a little bit into the original paint uh, just so that we can feather it in so we mask up and do that Okay, I've sanded both sides. I don't feel a, a line between where the primer ends and the original paint begins. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. The uh, primer might be on a little bit thin, uh, but it's a lot, a lot smoother now. And similarly on, on this side. So I'm gonna call that part done. And now I think we're ready to get ready to paint, uh, <laughs> spray the, uh, the brown paint on. Okay, one last thing before I uh, start spraying paint is I want to clean the surface. And I got a recommendation from Troy from Troy's Restorations. He uses this foaming glass cleaner, I guess it's called Sprayway, uh, to you know prep the surface. Because uh, I was worried about, you know, I didn't want something that would make the, <laughs> you know, uh, interfere with the Bondo or make, uh, you know, the... Uh, original paint run or anything like that. So just a little bit on a microfiber cloth. And we'll just come in here and clean off all the dust from the uh, sanding. Yeah, all right. You can see how, <laughs> how much of a difference that makes. Okay, and then this will dry completely while we are mixing our paint and loading our HVLP gun, getting that dialed in just a little bit more. Okay, 
because you don't want to spray dust. You don't want to paint dust. You don't want to paint dirt. All right, I'm gonna do the other side. We're gonna let that dry, and then we'll go mix the paint to spray. Okay, I've got a new HVLP gun uh, set up and ready to go. You know, technically you can use the same gun if you clean it well enough. You know, spraying oil-based paints and latex paints, again, cleaning enough in between, but I didn't wanna risk it, and these things are so cheap, so I got a second one here, cleaned it following the instructions, you know, it actually came apart a little bit different uh, than the uh, the first one. And one thing to uh, point out, something that helped me was, the I guess, you know, years ago, these used to come with the wrenches uh, that would take the nozzle off, but they don't anymore. So I was using some channel locks and it was kind of mangling uh, the soft metal a bit. So I grabbed this, this is a 19 millimeter, I guess this is called a cone wrench. Uh, these are used by, you know, people working on bicycles. So uh, this was able to take that nozzle off uh, with no problem. So again, using a different gun here. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and thin this paint. Again, I'm using this Benjamin Moore Advanced or Advanced uh, Satin uh, Interior Waterborne Alkyd. It's an Alkyd paint, so not a latex, not an oil base. It's an Alkyd paint, as you can see right here. Um, because it's waterborne, we're going to thin it with water. So I've got a cup of water right over there from the uh, the movies. We want to see the the Super Mario movie the other day, which was great. And uh, we got a souvenir cup for, I guess, there's a Dungeons and Dragons movie coming out soon. So uh, yeah, and the only issue with this is, it takes 46 hours right there to dry to the touch. Uh, then you have to wait 16 hours between recoats, which is a long time, but cleans up with soap and water and it takes up to a week to really cure and harden. So uh, we'll have to keep note of that. So let's open this up. Kind of the... Uh, this is go time. All right, look at that, brown paint. Not blue, not whatever. Oh, and I've got these little, uh, <laughs> this is supposed to go on like this, uh, just to make cleanup a little bit easier. It's this like uh, paint can spout thing, if I can figure out how to put it on. That doesn't seem right. Maybe it goes on like this. All right, I think that's maybe the way to do it. <laughs> I think it's on, I hope it's on. So let's pour uh, maybe a pint or so into this mixing cup. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful brown paint. All right. Let's write about a pint. So roughly half of this can and uh, that should be maybe enough to get Three coats on, I'm thinking. All right, what do I do with this? Are these supposed to be disposable? That's just a mess right there. Put that on hand tight for now. And I just got paint everywhere, so that didn't uh, really do me much good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is what happens when you're messing around with paint. I think it's water-based. 
yeah, whatever. All right, and I got a stirring stick here. And what we're looking for, if you can see this, is uh, sort of the consistency of milk. So add some water here to thin it. Give this a good stir. That might be not bad, but. And man, you know, <laughs> this HBELP stuff goes on pretty good, but uh, it is sh it is so much work. You know, at least an hour of, of you know, prep and clean up for what? You know, two minutes of, uh, of painting per session. And, uh, you know, disassembling and cleaning the gun is so much work each time. Yeah, a little bit more water, I think. And, um, you know, these things are so cheap. I think normally they're like... 15 bucks, 16 bucks, these guns, these purple uh, Harbor Freight uh, HVLP guns. And uh, you know, you get them on sale for $9.99 pretty frequently. And part of me is like, you know, especially when you're shooting oil paint, right? You're using almost, you know, you're using a few dollars worth of mineral spirits to clean the gun because you got to run, you know, almost a cup of mineral spirits through. Um, and then, you know, Certainly, you know, several minutes of cleaning. So part of me is like, hey, in the future, should I just treat these things as disposable, one-time use? You know, you gotta clean it to get it set up, but uh, spray it and when you're done, just chuck the thing, 10 bucks. I don't know, it seems a little bit wasteful, but uh, what's worse, wasting the mineral spirits or wasting the, the cheap metal? I don't know, let me know what you think. <laughs> All right, so that's, I think that's kind of what we're looking for. Let me touch more. And you can always add more water or mineral spirits to thin your paint, but you can never remove it. I mean, you can, I guess you can add more paint, so it's not, not the end of the world if it gets too thin, but uh, oh, we're splattering everywhere. My uh, goal of, Making this a clean process is not really working. All right, I think that's good. I think we are sufficiently thinned. And, uh, okay. Next step is to strain it. So I've got a filter here, and we do this just to make sure there are no, there's no sediment and no particles and nothing like that uh, going into the gun that will gum up the works or make it look bad on the outside. So we'll just pour it through this filter. And I got this stand just to make everything nice and easy. That's going through pretty good. That rich chocolate brown. I hope this looks good. <laughs> <laughs> when it's on the cabinet and everything is removed, but only time will tell. And that's probably, that's probably enough paint for this first application. Maybe more than enough. We can always uh, toss it back in, whatever we don't use, empty it from the gun back into the, uh, the mixing cup. And I might have just wiped paint on my face. So, all right, I'm gonna let this uh, finish straining uh, and then we'll go outside and get everything uh, set up to do uh, a trial run. Okay, I'm masked up and ready to go. And uh, like I was saying before, it's important to get everything dialed in before you start putting paint on the cabinet. I've got the air pressure controlled at three different spots. I've got it all the way back on the uh, air compressor itself. I've got a regulator sort of in the middle of the line between the two runs of air hose, you know, right next to the filter. And I've also got sort of a, uh, a little, you know, sort of detail one uh, right here so I can control the air pressure through different spots. And, you know, I'm kind of aiming, you know, you're supposed to run this between 40 and 70 PSI, but that's when it's actually moving. So right here, you can see it's about 80 PSI, which seems high, but if I pull the trigger, you see that drops down to about 50, which is sort of a good spot uh, for me. Uh, and then you have some adjustments here. This controls the, the airflow, 
that's a really loose. Uh, this controls the paint flow and this is the spray pattern. So we're gonna mess with these uh, knobs here on the gun until we get a good um, you know, shoot going on uh, this, this scrap uh, over here. This is like the box that the compressor went in. And you can see what I did with the, um, with the, uh, uh, the primer, right? This is kind of what you're looking for, sort of a, an elongated uh, shape. So we can come in right here and sort of see what we get. And that's really not bad. Let's try it again. So that pattern is sort of what you want. Maybe I can put a little bit more paint in. So that looks pretty good to me. So I think we're dialed in pretty good. So here goes nothing. We'll get some paint going on the cabinet. Maybe come in here a little bit so you can see uh, slightly better what I'm doing. And you know, the, the, the technique that you use to apply it you know, matters too. And my masking is kind of double, double, double check it. I hate this tape, it's not good. Not good tape. Um, you know, you wanna keep it perpendicular or I guess parallel and moving in parallel back and forth. You don't wanna twist like this. You don't wanna twist up and down. You want it nice and flat and sort of moving like a typewriter uh, back and forth. And start your stroke you know, away from the, the target and end it past. And uh, we're looking for you know, relatively thin coats here. And I'm not gonna put a ton up here at the top cause I'm gonna to try to feather this as best I can, but I don't really know what I'm doing there. So wish me luck. I don't know if I'm getting as much paint as I want to be coming through. And I'm so low to the ground here that I really can't bend good. Okay, I think that's probably good. I don't wanna do much more because I think I'll risk, you know, getting the paint starting to run. So I'm gonna call that the first coat on this side. I'm gonna turn the cabinet around and then I'll uh, run the paint uh, on the other side. So I'll come back in a second. Okay, we're spun around. So here we go on the, uh, the other side. Okay, I think we're gonna call that the first coat of paint. <laughs> I got a bit on the driveway here and into the grass, but uh, hey, I guess it's better than doing it inside the garage. So, all right, I'm going to uh, bring the cabinet into the garage so that it can start to dry and uh, clean everything up. And uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna show you next. So I think I'm gonna do the cleanup on my own. I'm gonna dump the excess paint uh, from the gun back into the, into the mixing bowl. Let me get the mask off, I don't need that. Um, yeah, put the excess paint back into the mixing cup um, to break everything down, clean it, let it dry, and we're gonna wait uh, 16 hours. I think it's supposed to rain again tomorrow, so might have to paint inside the garage or you know, find a, a break in the, in the rain. But uh, yeah, that's the first coat. You know, it looks lighter. It looks lighter on this side, but I don't know if that's the, the sun playing trick. So, all right, uh, I'll come back maybe after we do the next two coats and we'll see what it looks like there. Stay tuned. All right, here we go with coat number two. I think I got it dialed in, so let's do it.
Okay, I've got two coats of the brown paint on and it's fully dry. It's been uh, at least a day or two. And uh, I was thinking I needed maybe another coat, but again, I was talking to Troy from Troy's Restorations on YouTube. If you haven't already subscribed to him, you should definitely subscribe to his channel. And uh, he was saying I'm probably good with two coats and that this would be the right time to do some feathering, some blending to blend, to blend the new brown paint into the old brown paint. Uh, and he was kind enough as to send me a private video uh, demonstrating the, the technique he recommends. He was painting a, uh, uh, an automobile part. So uh, I'm gonna use the technique uh, that he described and I'm gonna use, it's the, just the same tools, it's just a, a way to do it. So uh, what I need to do right now is <laughs> take the masking off and uh, see how this looks. And I wanna be kind of careful because of course, this paint, I don't like it, or this, this tape, I don't like it at all. It doesn't stick to anything except it pulls the paint off. It pulls the original paint off. So I'm gonna be super careful here, and I got kind of two layers of it on. Um, let's see what we've got. Uh, I mean, it's not as dark as the original, but I mean, it could be, it could be a lot worse. It could be a lot worse. Uh, all right. So yeah, the, uh, the original paint is, you know, noticeably darker. Uh, and it has more of a sheen than what I've got here. So I don't know if this was originally like a semi-gloss because this is a satin. The new paint is a satin. But uh, yeah, okay. And uh, let's pull this other layer off. And I guess there's uh, even a, <laughs> a layer underneath that. I got tons of paint or tons of tape here. I can actually just, and I might have to kind of remask all of this. I need to expose more of the original paint so that I can blend into it. All right. And I don't want to paint over the, um, obviously the original side art. Let's kind of flip this over here a bit. And we'll, we'll remask before painting this. Okay. That looks all right. Um, see, I want to be careful not to go any higher than this because I don't want to blend into uh, into the side art. But uh, how does that look on camera? Oh yeah, it looks even more striking, the difference on camera. Uh, the new paint isn't nearly as brown, or isn't as dark as the old one. And you know, I, I knew this was gonna be a risk. Uh, <laughs> I guess I could have take the, I could have, you know, threw the cabinet into the back of my truck and taken that to uh, a paint store to get a, a, a more perfect match. But uh, what are you gonna do? Uh, I'm certainly not redoing it at this point. But um, what I wanna do right now actually is sand this tape line. So I've got some uh, 600 grit uh, wet dry uh, sandpaper and a spray bottle of water. Uh, and this, this sandpaper is meant for like working on cars and you can, uh, you know, uh, it's meant for, you know, wet sanding or dry sanding. And I'm just gonna come across this, this tape line and, um, you know, uh, wet sand it a little bit. So let me spritz it. And we'll see what this looks like. And of course it's lifting paint off, which is not really what I wanted. I guess it's not the worst thing for blending. Just trying to get the, the paint line undone, or the tape line. 
in and it's going right down to the, <laughs> it's going right down to the primer. So, oh boy, let me grab a paper towel. See how bad we've made this. And look, I'm making, I'm making these mistakes, so hopefully you all don't need to. All right, let me just do a little bit. I wonder if I could have done this maybe with a, a magic eraser. Just look at that. I mean, this cabinet wasn't perfect to begin with. And uh, perfect is not what we were going for. Okay. So look, it's like even down here, look, the water, the water is like affecting the paint down here. And this is that. Benjamin Moore Advanced Waterborne Alkyd. Um, oh, so yeah, I make mistakes, so you guys don't need to repeat them. And I would use that cleaner again, but I'm worried how that cleaner is going to affect the, uh, the paint. <laughs> how bad does that look? Oh my gosh. <sighs> well, like I said, I'm not redoing it. So if you're looking for uh, techniques on how to get your cabinets ready for a museum, this is definitely not the channel for you. Uh, marvelous. I don't blame Troy, <laughs> not even a little bit. This is, uh, this is just how it goes with me, my luck. Paint matches off. <sighs> Coats are a little thin. So uh, yeah, let me look at, uh, Masking this off a little bit just so that I don't have to worry about spraying into the, uh, the side art and then we'll we'll do that blending technique that uh, Troy was telling me about. Okay, we're all set up. I got my mask on. I got one of the garage doors open. Uh, I've got the gun all set up and I've got the uh, nozzle in the other direction uh, so that the fan is across instead of up and down because we're going to be going sort of from the bottom up and feathering up and you know kind of doing the sweeping motion and then letting go at the top of the stroke and then almost pulling away because we can get you know a good amount of paint down here but we want to just gently kind of mist and I've got the pattern on the gun set up so that's really just a mist so let me show you like this so if I hold it in place I'll get a but I've just got a mist here and I'm going to kind of mist up like that, just to get a little bit of paint there. And I don't have a tape line. I've got some uh, newspaper there just to kind of prevent it from really going in, but I don't want a sharp line. So uh, here goes nothing. I'm getting hung up on the air hose. I don't know if that was a good idea. I'm just trying to cover up the primer that I exposed. Let 
and I'm still getting kind of a line. Now, let's see if I can stay away from the All right, I don't know if that looks good or if that looks terrible, um, but that's what we're doing with that side. All right, I'm gonna turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. All right, we've got a, a little more room to work with on this side, and uh, I've pulled the uh, the paper off of the cabinet a little bit just to try to minimize that uh, that edge because uh, that's the whole point we're trying to get rid of the edge and kind of blend it in so here goes this side if you're a pro out there Oh, and there goes the compressor. If you're a pro, please don't laugh at me. <laughs> I've never done anything like this before. Let's see, are we getting a line? Yeah, we're kind of getting a line here too. All right, I think that's uh, <laughs> that's it for the paint. I'm gonna uh, try to put the gun down without dropping it. And then come in here with a wet paper towel and just make sure we get everything off of the, uh, the side art. Oh man. That looks that looks great. Let me come back and try to do that again. Okay. This stuff is so stressful for me, you know, with the, uh, with the electronic stuff, I feel like I can sort of make my way through things. Oh man. But <laughs> with the cosmetic stuff, I am uh, certainly, not the guy that you want to emulate. But, hey, at least this looks better than, uh, <laughs> at least it looks better than uh, being painted all black. So, um, wow. Let me get myself situated here. Oh, get the mask off. Oh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. And you know, it looks splotchy uh, on the camera. It looks darker here and lighter here. That's not really coming through in person. Let me take a closer look here. Uh, you can see how like down here, it's darker because there isn't much blending up here. It's 
lighter just because it's uh, wet. I am a little bit worried about how this looks right there, but uh, maybe we can use some, I don't know, paper towel with water in a day or so and <laughs> blend it in. But, uh, hmm, that's where we are for now. All right, guys, <laughs> I took all the masking off just to get a better look at uh, how we're doing and to make sure nothing, you know, the paper doesn't stick to the wet paint that's sort of feathered uh, underneath it. But yeah, I think uh, <laughs> this is how we're gonna go uh, with the HVLP. Um, you know, we'll give it a couple days to let it dry. And I guess it takes maybe a couple weeks to cure fully to full strength hardness. But yeah, I'll come back and, and see what this is looking like today, uh, tomorrow and the day after. You know, it should, um, it should dry a little bit harder, but, uh, and maybe we can take a paper towel and kind of smooth that out a little bit. But, you know, from a distance, <laughs> it doesn't look terrible, right? It looks okay. So yeah, I think we've maybe only got, I'm thinking two episodes left. What do we got left to do? Um, well, I've got to paint the front kick plate and I'm just gonna use some, um, black spray paint, rattle can paint uh, for that. Uh, I like using the, um, what is it, Rust-Oleum um, Ultra, something like that. Anyway, I'll, sh I'll show that to you in the in the, a future in the next video. Um, so we've got we've got that to do, and uh, I've got to uh, repair, rebuild the um, the original marquee light. You know, because we had somebody had replaced it with a, uh, a bulb, an incandescent bulb, and that just won't do. And I have a reproduction, uh, I have a replacement speaker because the old one was blown out and I have a reproduction speaker grill from Winslow on Clov um, to uh, replace the, uh, the speaker grill that was blasted, broken apart. Uh, and then we really just basically have, um, well, maybe I need to paint the coin doors. I think I will do that. So we'll probably do that in the next episode. And then it's reassembly and then we're done. And hopefully everything still works. Let's take a look at the paint job on this side. And yeah, it's not perfect, right? Um, but it's okay, right? And it, it looks closer in person than it does on camera. The camera is really showing a difference between the original paint, which is darker, and the new paint, which is lighter. But uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm okay with this, right? It'll, it'll dry a little bit darker. And like I said, in, in real life, it looks okay. And in arcade lighting, right, it doesn't have these harsh overhead lights like this. You know, you're never gonna be able to tell. And kind of back by the foot, you know, the foot area on this one looks pretty good. Um, and yeah, you know, um, there's a bit of peeling and, and whatever. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna touch it up. I'm gonna leave it the way it is. All right, I'll probably make it worse by touching it up. And I was thinking about putting, spraying a, a clear coat on this, um, you know, just to preserve the original paint, but I'm not going to do that just in case I hate how the, uh, the, the bottom paint dries and maybe I do wanna come back over with a, a darker paint and, and blend it in better. I don't wanna put a clear coat on because that kind of, I guess, would prevent me from doing that, I, I think. Um, plus, I don't know how the Alkyd uh, paint is gonna handle taking a, a clear coat. There's a lot of conflicting information out there and I think most people advise against putting a clear coat over this stuff because it, it, it really kind of acts sort of like an oil, sort of like a water born uh, latex paint. But um, yeah, so maybe two episodes left. So if you don't wanna miss those episodes, make sure you're subscribed, right? And click that notification bell so YouTube tells you when I upload a new video. I'm, you know, the, the, the schedule that I'm kind of on right now that's working for me is Sunday afternoons. That also seems to be when most of my audience is online. So uh, hopefully that works for you, Sunday afternoons. And I do, do try to sprinkle in uh, a short video every now and then either a quick repair or, you know, some kind of detail or some gameplay, you know, feature or, uh, or whatever, tours, whatever, of, uh, of different arcades across the country. So, and I, I throw those in sort of midweek. And like last weekend, weekends when I do the Coin Jam podcast, which we're having a ton of fun with, uh, we've got three episodes in so far, um, you know, weekends that I do the, the live stream on Saturdays, I don't do a Sunday video because, you know, I figure two hours of, of me and my friends blabbing 
is enough uh, content for even the most rabid Overtime Arcade fans, and there are some of you out there, and I love all you guys. But uh, yeah, make sure you're subscribed for all of that. Um, maybe two episodes left at the Joust, and then we'll be done, and I'm really excited to uh, get this in the basement and play it. My kids have been begging to play it, so I want to wrap this one up uh, pretty, pretty soon. And uh, there's another game over here. <laughs> that I picked up the other day. I need to release another pickup video for. That might be the, the next one, is uh, this little guy over here. Any guesses as to what that might be? Um, but uh, yeah, so what did I learn? Um, you know, this is my first time ever attempting HVLP painting, high volume, low pressure. Uh, and it was good practice, because I'm going to use that setup uh, when I redo the Ms. Pack stencils uh, when those arrive, and hopefully they're coming in soon, because that's all I have really left to do on that cabinet is, you know, fix up some of the, you know, Bondo and, and sand and stuff, and then repaint, repaint that cabinet. But uh, what did I learn? I mean, I got some good practice. You know, the setup that I bought mostly from Harbor Freight worked pretty well. Even the, uh, you know, smaller, somewhat underpowered 21-gallon, uh, compressor here, you know, did an okay job. It did click on, you know, usually when I was uh, a painting, but that's fine. I never noticed any loss of pressure or anything like that. So yeah, all of the stuff that I bought mostly from Harbor Freight worked out pretty well. And I got a huge mess of boxes and parts and whatever, you know, here's the, uh, the HVLP gun that I just used taken apart for cleaning. But uh, yeah, this worked pretty well. So I want to say thanks to Liam from Retrobotics on YouTube. Uh, he is, you know, a little bit, a couple steps ahead of me. He completely redid the stencils on his Joust uh, restoration project. And I believe, I believe he's got a video coming out soon, perhaps before this one. Uh, if it does come out, I'll link to it in the, uh, the video uh, description or the description for this video. So thank you, Liam, for <laughs> being a guinea pig sort of ahead of me, uh, testing out most of this stuff and uh, providing some feedback on, on what to get. And also, very, very, very special thank you to Troy from Troy's Restorations on YouTube for giving me some expert advice. So thank you, Troy, for all of that. And again, I'll link to Troy's video, or Troy's uh, channel in the video description. So uh, yeah, I think I'll wrap up this video. I think it's a pretty long one, but hopefully it was informative and enjoyable. You know, if you're thinking about trying uh, HVLP, you know, I couldn't find many videos on YouTube of people specifically using HVLP to paint uh, arcade cabinets. So hopefully this helps you, you know, kind of demystify and simplify and, you know, make it seem approachable because, you know, it's not that hard. If I can do it, anybody can do it. And, uh, you know, even if it's not perfect, it's still a thousand times better, a million times better than what it was before, you know, when this was originally painted over black with SNK Street Smart Side Art decal on it. But uh, yeah, that, uh, that sure does look nice. So. I think I'm going to wrap up the video here. Thanks for all the great feedback, the likes, comments, shares, subscriptions, all that stuff. I appreciate all of it. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next episode. We'll paint the front uh, kick plate and do some other things and coming down the home stretch. So as always, I'm Charlie. Thanks for watching Overtime Arcade and I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! overtime.